I'm estimating that we need to do nine layers of cloth in here for the strength that we need it to have to then put it on the boat. I currently have four layers on, so you guys are going to get to watch layer number five go on. We've got big plans for the small boat. Now, if you're using laminating resin, you do not have to sand between each layer to scuff it up to get the next layer to stick to it. But you do need to sand between each layer because you might have little, little strands of fiberglass sticking up just like this guy here that won't let the next layer stick down. You'll create an air bubble. So you have to go through a sandpaper and knock them all down like that. So all of this dust, you don't actually have to get it out of here because it's just fiberglass dust, which is literally what is uh, one of the thickener options when you're working with fiberglass resin. So I just leave it in, honestly. I paint on the next layer of resin, and then I put the cloth on, wet the cloth, and just take it from there. Uh, I'm wearing a good mask because <laughs> I don't really want to breathe all this fiberglass dust. It's not good for you, and also the resin I'm working with smells horrible, and you need to wear a mask for it, because otherwise it's going to wreck you. Alright, so I always start every layer, you sand it, then I paint a layer of the Total Boat laminating resin, on the whole thing, get it nice and wet. That way when you put the cloth on, it sticks really well to it. And it makes wetting the cloth a lot easier because it's already wet on the underside. So it sticks to the wall. It, it just, it makes it so much easier. And then you'll have less bubbles and it'll be easier to get the bubbles out. So you see all the white parts? And here we have some like loose strands that the uh, sandpaper so like it softened them up, so now they move around. So just get them all good and wet. If you sand it into a bubble, fill the bubble now. That kind of stuff. I'm using 1708. So on one side, it's biaxial cloth. So it, they all run in one direction. Then there's another layer that runs in you know perpendicular direction. So they're 45 degree angles, or they're they're running at diagonals. And then on the underside, it's chop strand mat. So you want to put the chop strand mat side down. So that's a side that goes against the hull. We just stick that on. Push it into place. And then we start wetting that into everything. So you can see the the resin's starting to shine through because it's getting wet from the underside. So now we just start wetting from the outside, and then it's wet and tacky on the inside, and then getting wet from the outside, and it'll just soak through. So the cloth will actually turn clear. And just keep painting till everything's uniform and just kind of disappears into the into the shape of the mold. Now you can see the resin runs down to the bottom and it makes like a little river at the bottom. So I always put the bottom piece in last. And I might even put a piece of chop stirring mat to soak up the extra uh, resin that drips. Because you don't want it to be thick, the, the resin. So the, the part that gives all this strength is the fiberglass. The resin's actually the weakest part of the whole system. So if you just like cast this as just solid resin, it'd be really brittle and it would crack. So you don't want a ton of resin, you want just enough. If you have any areas that are too much resin and too thick, 
you just want to add more cloth and add more glass to those areas. So a lot of people use a roller and I have the roller, but I've found it works just as well to take the paintbrush itself and like squeegee the bubbles out. Just squish them out to the side. using a dry brush and I'm just squishing this in to go picking up all the resin that's already down there because we don't want to put too much resin and since there is too much resin already down here it's just trying to pick up that resin so this last layer is more of a sponge that you put in the bottom of the bilge to soak up the excess rather than another piece that you're you know wetting and all that business so at the end we will wet it but we're just trying to get as much as we can soaked up first.
With that, we have five layers of fiberglass on. Now, I don't know exactly how many layers I need to do yet. I haven't done the math. I think it's around nine, just based on scantling numbers and just a rough guess of how thick each layer of fiberglass is. So what I'm going to be doing later, and kind of pretty soon, is I'm going to make a test piece. And I'll just have one layer, two layers, three, four, five, and see how thick is one layer of cloth, two layers of cloth, three layers of cloth, all the way up to, say, ten layers of cloth. And then I'll know, do I need to do nine layers, or do I actually only need eight layers? Like, how how thick does it come out to be when you do X number of layers of cloth? Because then I'll know how thick exactly I need to make this based on the math. And then I'll know in practicality how many layers of cloth is that thickness. I'm not building this to be as light and as thin as possible because I want it to be a lot stronger. This is going to go on a boat that's going to go in the ocean. So therefore it has to be overbuilt. That way I feel safe on it. Some people like thin, very well engineered, ultra light boats and take those out in the ocean and, you know, do speed records shooting across the ocean at breakneck speeds. I love watching videos of that, but I would feel safe on that boat. Since I'm going to be taking, you know, my wife, my kids, the birds, all that on this boat out into the ocean, I want to make sure that I think it's really strong and safe. And for the sailing that we're going to be doing, I'm going to overbuild this thing, which means it's going to be on the heavier side and it's going on to a heavy boat and all of it's going to be heavy. That's the reality. But if I make it strong, it'll then help us with its weight. It won't just be literally dead weight hanging off the back of the boat. So this is going to cure. And then next time I'm going to sand it again and put another layer of cloth on and the process repeats itself. When we finally have it thick enough, then we pop it out. And all these loose bits up here that look pretty ratty and horrible, that's excess that overhangs. When I take it out, I'm going to cut that off, and then it'll be a nice crisp edge. It's a very time-consuming process. I mean, this one layer of cloth went pretty quick. It took me three hours. Normally, they take me about four to five hours. So I'm getting a little more practice. I know where the cloth needs to go and then it just happens faster.